Hello everyone and welcome to RTFI Pro. My name is George Jakes and today we'll be presenting video 2 of our trilogy on x-ray tubes. Today's video we'll be discussing the primary exposure factors of the x-ray tube. With x-ray tubes, there are four primary exposure factors, which are milliampere, kilovoltage, time, and distance. Milliampere and time, milliampere seconds. Milliampere and time are directly related. Milliampere is the function that will increase or decrease the number of electrons within the tube. As mentioned in video one, when the milliampere is increased, it increases the current within the filament and it will result in more electrons traveling to the target and decreasing the current will result in fewer electrons to the target. As a result, if the milliampere is doubled, it will double the number of electrons and it would therefore double the amount of x-rays produced. If the milliampere is reduced to 50% of the original MA, it will reduce the number of electrons traveling to the anode target by 50% and in turn reduce the amount of x-rays produced by 50%. As mentioned, milliampere and exposure time are directly related. Milliampere seconds can be doubled by doubling the milliampere or by doubling the exposure time. A change in either milliampere or exposure time proportionally changes the milliampere seconds. To maintain the same milliampere seconds, the radiographer must increase the milliampere and proportionally decrease the exposure time. For example, if the original exposure was set at 10 MA and exposure time of 10 seconds, it would be 100 milliamp second exposure. If we double the milliampere, we would need to reduce the exposure time by 50% to get the same exposure. For example, if we have 20 MA and a 5 second exposure, we would still have 100 MAS exposure. From this example, we can verify that the exposure is still 100 milliamp seconds as in the original exposure due to doubling the milliampere and reducing the exposure time by half. Now let's review this example by reducing the milliampere by half and doubling the exposure time, which would be 5 MA and exposure time of 20 seconds would equal 100 milliamp seconds. Here we reduce the original exposure milliampere from 10 to 5 MA, but we doubled the exposure time from 10 to 20 seconds to produce the same 100 milliamp second exposure. As a result, the product of milliampere and exposure time have a direct proportional relationship with the quantity of x-rays produced. The kilovoltage. The KVP is the result of voltage difference from the negative cathode and positive anode. This is known as two potential. The higher the KV, the larger the voltage difference between the cathode and the anode, which results in faster electrons, which creates higher radiation energy. The lower the KV, the lower the voltage difference, which results in slower electrons, resulting in lower radiation energy. KVP is the only primary exposure factor that can change the energy of the beam. By increasing or decreasing the KVP, we can change the energy level of the beam. Increasing KVP increases intensity just as milliampere seconds does, but it also increases the quality of the beam. The KVP is simply the maximum voltage that is within the energy spectrum. A KVP set to 150 KVP will have photon energy no greater than 150 kV. Not all photons in the exposure beam will have 150 kV, but most of the beam will. This is because the energy of the x-rays is part of the spectrum and not a constant as in gamma. For instance, 
150 kVp is equal to a maximum of 150 kV. 200 kVp is equal to a maximum of 200 kV. KVP in the 15% rule. Within the original exposure under the same variables, x-rays from KVP can follow the 15% rule. The 15% rule states that changing the KVP by 15% has the same effect as doubling the MAS or reducing the MAS by 50%. For example, increasing the KVP from 100 to 115 results in a beam intensity increase in 15%, which produces the same exposure to the film as increasing the milliampere seconds from 10 to 20. Alternatively, decreasing the KVP from 115 to 100, which results in a beam intensity decrease by 15%, produces the same exposure to the film from decreasing from 20 milliampere seconds to 10 milliampere seconds. Practically speaking, if we had an original exposure x-raying a weld with a beam intensity of 100 kVp with exposures of 100 milliampere seconds with a 15% increase in kVp, it would be the equivalent to 115 kVp or 200 milliampere seconds. Now the final primary exposure factor, distance. Distance is governed by the inverse square law. As source to film distance increases, the beam intensity decreases, and when the source to film distance decreases, the beam intensity increases. For example, think of a flashlight. The closer the flashlight is to an object, the more light is received at the object. The farther away the light, the less light is received. This is the same for radiation. By manipulating the distance, we control the exposure time. However, this distance needs to be within reason as extreme distances will inadvertently create unnecessary exposure times resulting in more radiation being exposed for longer periods of time and depending on the application, more expense for the clients. Distances which are too close will shorten the exposure time but can affect the sensitivity and quality of the radiograph. Choosing a distance within reason that supports both the quality and economics of the job is important. Well folks, that concludes our video for this week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for video three of our trilogy on x-ray tubes. Until next time, work safe and expand your knowledge for an increased reliability of inspection.